calculate the time required for a 6,000 newton force to stop a 1,200 kilogram car initially traveling at 10 meters per second. Show all your work, including the equations, substitution with units. Okay, so let's jot down everything we know. We know we got a, a force, right? This, this 6,000 newton force that's going to be used to stop a car. So force equals 6,000 newtons. And the mass of the car is 1,200 kilograms. And it's traveling initially at, so V initial of the car is traveling at 10 meters per second. And we want to know how much time it's going to take for this force to stop this car. So that's what we want to know. What kind of problem is this? This is kind of a, a momentum problem, right? But it's not just momentum, it's momentum and impulse. So earlier we talked about delta P, the, mo the change in momentum of a system equals zero, right? When is that true? The change in momentum for a system is zero when there's no impulse acting on the system. So in this case, if the system is the car and it's moving with an initial velocity, how can that momentum possibly change? The only way it can change is if an impulse acts on it. And that's exactly what's happening. That's this force. That's this 6,000 Newton force. So this is only true, delta P equals zero is only true when there's no impulse. But in our case, there is an impulse. So when there's an impulse, we don't say delta P equals zero, we say delta P equals J, where J is the magnitude of the impulse. So let's start to fill in some of the detail here. If J equals delta P, if the change in momentum of the system is equal to the impulse, then how do we express the impulse? Well, the impulse is the force, the average force that's exerted, times the time that it, it's exerted for. So you can, and that's what we're after, by the way, is the time. So that's the total magnitude of the impulse. And that's equal to the change in momentum of the system, which is however much momentum the system had initially, minus how much it had at the end, p initial minus p final. What was the momentum at the end? Well, it says that the, this impulse, the 6,000 newton force, was used to stop the car. So the final momentum is zero, because at the end the car is stopped. So now we just have Ft equals initial momentum. And how do we express momentum? Well, in general, momentum is the mass times the velocity, right? So we can take this even a step further and say the impulse is equal to the mass times the velocity. And that velocity is the initial velocity of the car, right? It's this velocity because the final velocity is zero. And now we know the force, we know the mass of the car, we know the initial velocity of the car. The only thing we don't know is the time. We can go ahead and find it. So let's solve for time. We get T equals mass of the car times the initial velocity of the car divided by the force that's used to stop the car. And now we can make those substitutions. The mass is 1,200 kilograms times 10 meters per second. And that's all being divided by 6,000 newtons. So 1,200 times 10 is 12,000, right? And then 12,000 divided by 6,000 is 2. And what's the units? Well, kilogram meters per second is the units of momentum, kilogram meters per second. And newtons is really kilogram meters per second squared. So let's think about that. We got kilogram meters over seconds being divided by kilogram meters per second squared. So kilograms cancels, meters cancels, and we end up with 1 over seconds divided by 1 over seconds squared. So what happens is this denominator of the denominator becomes the numerator of the numerator. So this becomes seconds squared over seconds, which is just seconds. And that's what we expect because we're calculating a time, so we wanted it to come out as seconds. And that's how long it takes. And you can check that too. If you want to just go back to 
here, then 2 seconds times 6,000 newtons is 12,000, and then the right side is mv, which is 1,200 times 10, which is 12,000 as well. So that's kind of the gut check. And um, that's a momentum and impulse problem.